When I started my first community college teaching job right out of graduate school, I was a wide-eyed, idealistic professor who believed she could save the world through humanistic teaching. As an upwardly mobile Chicana and first-generation college graduate myself, I had a passion and drive for humanistic education because it had saved my world. I remember being smitten during the interview with the inner city college where I was eventually hired when I was told that the college was not like the University of Texas, my alma mater. There, I was told, you can change lives. Here, you save lives. When I stepped into my first classes, though, the reality was far removed from my idealized fantasies. As I stood in front of the class, I was met with a sea of blank stares, furrowed brows, and phones in hands. Many days I left campus downtrodden. Why was it my passion wasn't rubbing off on these students? How could they not be inspired by my curriculum? Didn't they want to be successful? Didn't they want to be saved? Eventually, I realized that my job was not to teach, but to listen, to help them shape and communicate their ideas, their past, their futures, their dreams into a language sometimes familiar, but often not. I was no longer throwing out lifelines at random. Instead, we were building bridges together to cross over troubled waters. But not all students made it across. I'll always remember the student who walked his super clean Jordans into every single class, skillfully avoided my welcoming nod, logged into his computer, and promptly put his head down and slept for the rest of the class. The truth was that he knew as soon as he walked into my classroom that I couldn't help him meet his goals. The truth was I never took the time to learn what his goals were. I hardly ever spoke to him and never reached out to find out why he was in the class, why he was so tired, why he attended every class without submitting any work of his own. To this day, I see him or versions of him in every class I teach. And sometimes they're dreamers who never speak up because they're embarrassed of their English or anxious about their status. Sometimes they're veterans worried about reading to classmates their searingly honest reflections of the experiences that still haunt their dreams, so they just don't bring their work to class or don't come to class at all. Sometimes they just graduated from high school and their deal offered them a job after they had already enrolled in classes and they don't think college is really for them, but they don't want to let their friends or their teachers down. Wanting to save these students led me actually to fear them, to fear the consequences of failing to help them. It led me to make the same decision they made. I disengaged. And just as with them, disengagement meant I had nothing to learn from them, no opportunity to grow, no bridges to construct. Becoming equity-minded as an instructor, capable of building bridges with the quietest, least engaged students, means recognizing that I am no one's savior. I'm a construction worker of the mind, and I'm recruiting experienced partners in educational opportunity.